With this cube selected, if we go over to our properties panel, click on the material tab, let's go ahead and press new to give this cube a new material. And in the past two videos, we discussed the surface material type and the wire material type, which is basically the same as a surface, only it will allow you to render out your objects as wireframe. So moving along, we have volume. And while most of the time I don't typically leave this material preview window open because it can slow your file down as you're using it. And typically I like to use my render preview down here to get a feel for what my materials are looking like on the actual objects that I'll be using them. But for now, we'll keep this open and I'll just go ahead and move this up to the top. So a volume material doesn't just affect the outer surface of the object, it affects the volume of the object as well, or basically the inner stuff of the object. To give you a quick example, if I were to say, press Shift A and add another cube here, and just bring it over here. If I were to give this cube a new material and just keep it of default surface type, and come down here in our camera area and press render preview button. Here to the left, we can see the cube with the volume material, and here to the right, we can see the cube with the basic material. And I'll go ahead and change the color of these, so maybe make it red, and under the shading, I'll change the transmission color value for the volume, which is the basic color of it, and we'll make it to a similar red here. So if I were to click on the cube using the surface material and press S to scale it up big enough to where our camera is down here inside and we press render preview, notice that the inside of this cube is quite clear in here. So a default surface material is really only affecting the actual mesh itself. So if I were to press my render preview button to turn that off and right click over here and say shift A and add a monkey here and press render preview again. We can see that inside of this cube, which I made it large enough to swallow up the whole camera and the objects inside here, that actually being inside of the cube doesn't make any big changes. So in comparison, if I were to scale this back down, move this over here, and then scale the volume material up to where we are inside of it, and press render preview, notice that we are now surrounded now by a foggy density here. So this really demonstrates the two main ways that we can use the volume material type. One is on an actual object to make it look ghastly or ghostly or something like that. And the other way is like this, is basically to define our environment for creating, like if we wanna make a smoky, foggy kind of environment like that where lights will show up and the, cause the light to scatter and things like that. So if I were to click this big cube container we're using with that volume, scale it back down, and click back on the Suzanne head, click new, we'll go ahead and give it another material and switch its type to volume, and maybe change the transmission color to uh, blue or something, come down here and press our render preview button. Well, here is the first example type. So say we wanted to have some kind of weird, wispy Suzanne head thing. We can control the density of this with this density setting. You have this first density slider, which we can bring down like this and thins out the overall volume of it. You may notice that this volume effect can appear a bit grainy, which you may uh, desire that. But if you want the appearance of the volume material to look a lot smoother, you can click on this integration tab and that's really controlled by this step size. Now under this lighting here, there's this resolution slider which you may think, oh, well that must control the quality of the volume material, but that's really for dealing with how light is treated when it hits the material. So to smooth this up, we can decrease this step size here. Of course, you know, the smoother you make this, the more work the computer is going to have to do, so it may, you know, slow things down a bit, but we can get this a lot smoother like that. And control this density value and the scale here. I'll go ahead and close that up. And under shading, we have more settings for our volume material. We have an emission value, which basically means glow, like emitting like light off of it. Right now it's at zero, we can increase this. Now it looks basically white because it is emitting this white color here. We could change that to green or blue or something like that. Now unfortunately this emission value will make the actual material glow 
but the light coming off of the object with this material is not going to be able to reflect onto anything else the same way as if you're using a surface material. So if we were to turn my render preview button off and I were to click on this generic cube here that we gave this material and made it red, let's go ahead and rename this material. We'll call it red glow, I guess. And so if under shading, I were to turn its emit value up and zoom my camera out a little bit so I can see this, you can see this making this brighter like it's glowing. And if I were to say shift A and under mesh add a plane, so we've got sort of like a ground so we could see if anything, any light was bouncing off of anything else. And we press render preview. We won't see the cube emitting any light, but if we click on the world tab here, and of course this is just for while we're in blender render mode turn on indirect lighting and under gather change this value to approximate and then press render preview materials using the default surface type with the emit value up will shine light onto other objects it's kind of hard to see right now because of the rest of the lighting in the scene so i'll click that to shut that off and turn this scene brightness value down to zero and so now we can see the glowing coming off of this material. If we click back on it here and click on the material tab where we increased its emit value. While the Suzanne head here, which we're using the volume, even though we can increase its emission value, unfortunately there's no real way to get that light to bounce off of anything else. It's basically just referring to its inner glow. We can increase that like that. Kind of the same thing goes for this reflection. Whereas if we're using a standard surface material type, where if I click back on this red cube where we've got this red glow material, whereas if I were to turn on the mirror value here and turn up this reflectivity, and then under lights, maybe turn my default lights back up a bit and press render preview button. Setting this reflectivity value for the default surface blender render material type will cause this to reflect things. So if I were to pick up this Suzanne head, press G to grab, bring it over here so we could actually, you know, it was, so it would be close enough to where we could see it reflecting. We can see that when we adjust the uh, reflect value for the default surface material type here, uh, it will actually reflect things. When we're talking about the volume material type, uh, this reflection value, uh, let me move the camera around a bit. It's just referring to sort of the inner world of that volume material. So if I were to you know, increase this reflection value up. This is just talking about how is light being scattered around and reflected inside of the objects using this volume material. And I'll go ahead and bring my scene brightness back down to zero, click back on this cube, and turn off the mirror value so we can see the light being emitted from it because it looks cool. And then we want to click back on the Suzanne head. And let's just give this Suzanne head material an interesting name too. Let's go ahead and call it uh, Suzanne Ghost, I guess. And we could adjust this reflection value, could change this reflection color, you know, and just get some interesting results. Adjust this density some more. And what have you. So if we were to scale this up a bit. Maybe bring that density scale down where it's not so thick. We can actually see through it. We can see that other object back there, which was using a volume material and what have you. Okay, so that's one way of using it. And the other way we talked about is basically as using it on an object to be the overall environment. If we click on this original cube where we had this first material using this volume material and we press S to scale this up and we would just want this to cover the entire boundaries of our scene or whatever we were you know going to animate or render and so we made it something like this and we could go ahead and rename the material that our big box thing which is now our environment using this volume material we could go ahead and rename it to smoky environment I suppose so we've got this material here and we could change its color back to white by bringing these RGB sliders all the way flush. Well, let's add a few basic objects that aren't using any materials as for contrast, such as some cylinders here. We could duplicate this a few times. 
press shift a maybe add some cones just so we have some sort of background to see what things are looking like within this big volume material box thing so we can't actually see them because it's it's so dense in here but if I were to click back on the box with our smoky environment material and drop this density down the more we drop this density down the more we can begin to see the actual cones and cubes and things back there actually looks pretty sweet pretty cool especially with that red glowing box we made Press my render preview button here. So once again, this is all just Blender render stuff right now. We want to get this basic understanding of Blender render materials under our belt, but we'll be discussing how to do this kind of stuff in cycles down the road when we get to that. Now that we're using this big cube with this smoky environment uh, volume type material, we could add lights and things like that in here, and we'll be able to see not just the surfaces the light hits, such as these cylinders on the floor, but the actual light being scattered into the environment itself. So if I were to press Shift A and under Lamp, add a spotlight here, press G to grab, R to rotate it, something like this. We can actually see the light shining down here since we are in Blender Render Mode. Down in the camera view, because it's in Material Viewport Shading, if you wanted to switch your 3D view to that, you could press either Alt Z or just come down here and switch this to Material Viewport Shading and we can see this like this but if we were to press render preview down here we can actually see the light cone itself not very brightly uh, but we can see the light from the cone itself being scattered into the environment which is pretty cool if we were to increase this energy to say 10 we can see this a lot better so we can control how much this gets scattered or you know moved around in this thing so all we got to do is click on the big box thing itself with the smoke environment and I'm gonna go ahead and switch this back to solid viewport shading or I could just press alt Z because it's easier to select stuff and work with stuff in the big 3d view but uh, we can adjust the scattering value which will control how much the light is scattered out from our spotlights or any other lights we've got going on in there and then if we close these up under lighting here, if we change this value from shaded to multiple scattering, we'll actually get even more control about how the light within inside of our big uh, smoky environment box thing will be scattered throughout everywhere. So we can control intensity. You see if I bring that down, we see no light being scattered into the environment. Bring that back up. The more we bring it up, we see it scattered more. The spread, how much is it getting spread about, and more values like that. But I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to shaded because it looks coolest like that. And we can see our ghostly Suzanne head here still haunting the place about. Oh, I am Suzanne's ghost. And move that around. And so actually, while in Blender Render mode, you can actually get the cone of a, a spot lamp to display even without this by if I press render preview, if I scale down our environment box. So if we were to press render preview right now, we don't see the cone of this spotlight anymore except for where it's hitting the side of our environment box there. But we can actually do that without that if we click this and under spot shape, if we turn on halo, notice that in the preview you can actually see the light now if we were to press render preview we can see that cone show up unfortunately this is only for blender render mode but we can control the intensity of it drop that down a bit so it's a bit more transparent which is really cool but it's very kind of clinically precise so you can get more control over scattering and stuff when you're using a volume material for a box or whatever shape and then just having it covering your whole environment and also for lamp types such as point or area there's no way to get light to show up. So that's another reason that using the volume can be useful for that. So if I were to you know, press S to scale this back up to where it's covering everything. We can actually, with our spot lamp using this halo effect, we can actually get the nice precise light showing up here and then also an, an additional kind of glowy effect from our smoky environment volume material. So if we were to rotate this around, you can see that sweet kind of like 
smoky look coming off of this in addition to uh, seeing that precise uh, cone light shape there. But if we were to add like say a point lamp such as this, whereas normally the point lamp will only affect the surfaces of objects when we're using a big volume material to cover up our whole scene like this, uh, we'll get scattering for that as well. And it's kind of being scattered all over the place. I'll go ahead and change the color of this spot lamp to something different so we can tell where it's actually affecting things. And if I were to adjust its fall off value, which is basically how far away can this light from this point lamp emit from 25 to say something real small like 0.1 and increase the energy to something like 75. And I'll press Alt and tap middle mouse to zoom in on this down in my camera view. Maybe 75 was a bit much, how about 25? Anyway, it's a lot more contained, but we can still see the light affecting the environment when we're using this uh, volume material type.